What's your current daily device, if what, you're allowed to say? What do you think? Yeah. Is it good? You know, if nothing didn't exist, uh -huh. what phone would you be using right now? It's uh, become the default choice for like a lot of people, most people. I'm not going to talk about the long, long term, but... Come on, tell us. <laughs> when you were growing up, did you, did you always want to be in tech? We actually added more um, to the production than we originally anticipated. Do you feel you've achieved that so far with the products you've made? Unfortunately, it's probably social media apps. Do you feel it's plateaued then? Uh, it's very... I never thought about this. How can it really push the boundary in terms of mobile OS and what it can bring to people? I think if you're not Apple everything, this is probably a really good solution. If you weren't the Nothing CEO right now, where would you be and what would you be doing? So this is really exciting. We know the Nothing Phone 2 is due to launch on July the 11th. And a couple of weeks ago, I spent time with Nothing CEO Carl Pay at the Nothing store in London, Soho, talking current Nothing products, upcoming soon to be released devices and tech and life in general. He was incredibly generous with his time and it was incredibly eye-opening listening to how one of the present day's greatest tech minds operate. On top of that, I got to check out Nothing's really cool product design space and speak to some of the incredibly talented design team, witnessing firsthand how they've painstakingly engineered some of the current products like the Nothing Ear 2. And I sat in a super private behind closed doors room where I was shown a few top secret Nothing phone two features that I'm convinced that you're gonna love. The design studio doesn't at all look that awe-inspiring from outside. It's very subtle and you'd probably miss it if you didn't know it was there. But inside it's split into two floors. Upstairs I was shown the top secret information, more on that in a second. But downstairs, the first thing you notice when you walk in is this massive nothing phone one art thing and some marketing billboards. And towards the back of the room, it is filled with loads of really cool equipment from mechanical saws to 3D printers. And some of this gear means they can understand faults of products in real time. And they don't just have to use 3D renders or outsource. And there was also this system which helped create my very own custom made ASBYT Nothing Ear 2s. And I'm not gonna lie, that looks straight fire. And I was stood there watching this machine work its magic for far too long to the point where I actually forgot that there was work to be done. So I headed upstairs where I saw lots of the team hard at work on Macs and not Windows, if you're asking. Uh, but I can't show you the screens here because there may or may not be some top secret info there. But I was shown all of the year two components lined up in a tray, which is mad to see. I already knew there were many pieces that went into the final product, but seeing them all lined out in such a way really reaffirmed how impressive it is that all of these components could fit into something so small. And another thing that really impressed me was just listening to the individual team members in their own areas of expertise, hearing how even the simplest of features from a consumer point of view takes days, if not weeks, if not months of meticulous planning, prep and testing redoing over and over and over again until they settle on the release version. The issues they had with glues, making sure it was completely clean and non-visible due to the transparent design, a problem that most manufacturers don't have to deal with. And even things like the hinge sitting a fraction too high, or there being a tiny, not even really visible line on one part of the case that we wouldn't even really notice. The sheer volume of Ear 2 concepts and prototypes that existed prior to the final retail version was released is mind-blowing. Because even though on the surface of it, the Nothing Ear 2 looks fairly similar to the Ear 1, the Nothing design team were given a bit more free reign on the R&D to improve the product across the board. And they made some subtle but incredibly important changes to enhance the Ear 2s, like a change in the stem controls, the fractionally smaller outer shell, for a lot of it, they really had to go back to the basics. And it really does fill you with a lot of confidence that no stone will be left unturned in their pursuit of the perfect product. But such a search for perfection must be exhausting. I also got to meet the man behind the transparency whisper. Yes, that's right, the famous <sighs> noise that you are no doubt familiar with if you own a pair of Ear 2s was created by this gentleman right here. And it's actually his own voice. It apparently started off as a bit of a joke, but it has gone on to stand the test of time. He also showed me the equipment they use for all of the audio sounds, which for nothing, it was key that they were distinguishable so that you know what ANC is, which is for battery low, etc. whilst being fairly similar within a sphere. So it wasn't just random noises all over the place like, again, some other products. The sounds are also based on that of the sounds of insects as well, apparently, too, which 
you might think is a little strange, but not as strange as this little guy, which is an instrument that originally hails from Japan, known as an automaton, apparently. I don't think any of the audio coming from the Ear 2s was used on this specific instrument, but we still had a right laugh using it, and you may hear some of these noises coming in a future Nothing product. On a return band. May or may not, I don't know. I'm, I'm doing it as if I know, I don't. Lips are sealed, definitely not. But then I headed to the top secret nda room where I was witness to some of the hardware and software going in to the brand new next gen version of this, the Phone 2. I had a great chat with software product design lead Bruno Viegas, I hope I've pronounced that right. And while I have to be pretty much tight-lipped to what I was privy to inside that meeting until my review, which is coming very soon, subscribe for that, I did head over and sit down with the one and only Carl Pay at the Nothing store. And boy, are you gonna love hearing what he had to say. So I'm privileged to be here with Nothing CEO Carl Pay. Not only is he giving us a tour of the Nothing store here in, in London, Soho, uh, but he's also agreed to uh, answer a few questions that I've got. So firstly, thanks for sitting down with me today. Thanks for having me. An absolute pleasure to, to have you here. I've got two more serious questions about mm. Nothing and, and the tech industry as a whole. And then I've got a couple of fun ones to hopefully get to know the real Carl Pay um, a little bit better. So obviously co-founder of, of another brand that you were very successful in creating smartphones as a, you know, predominantly. Um, with Nothing, you have created a smartphone, very successful, the Nothing mm -hmm. Phone 1. And I believe there's a possible second one in the pipeline. But possibly, yeah. Possibly. <laughs> but an another big focus for you is, of course, audio. Um, uh -huh. The Nothing Ear 1s, uh, the Stick and the Ear 2s now. Um, firstly, why audio? And, mm -hmm. uh, and also, what's your favorite Nothing Ear 2 feature? Um, I think very early on, we knew we wanted to create an entire ecosystem of devices, but we just had to kind of pace it in the right way. And to be honest, it was very hard to convince people off the bat that hey, invest in us, let's, let's make a new smartphone. Because sure. if you think about it from the investor's perspective, or even the supply chains, the factory's perspective, they've seen this story before. There's been countless of other teams and other brands trying to do this in the last 10 years or so. And whilst they got the support from the suppliers and from the factories and from the investors, um, most of these companies, or in the last 10 years, all of these companies probably folded after the first device. Yeah. So I think now in, when we started in 2020 going out and telling that same story and the same vision, uh, we would have met a lot of skepticism because investors lost money, suppliers lost money. So we wanted to take a slightly more um, pragmatic approach. Let's create a product that's still within a big category. Smartphone is huge, like over a billion are sold every year. Yeah. But true wireless earphones, uh, it's still like 300 million sold every year, still relatively big. And so we wanted to create a product here to kind of prove ourselves, prove that our team can design something very unique, prove that we can manufacture what we design at scale, and also prove that we can actually sell. Like there's actual demand for our products. Yeah. So I think we chose this category also because it's kind of boring. Um, Apple invented the true wireless earbuds, right, with the AirPods. Yeah. Before that, it was like the one. The neck ones. The, 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 yeah, yeah, the neck band. Um, and a lot of companies kind of just followed Apple and created these similar looking white, glossy earbuds. And we thought, you know, there must be people out there who appreciate this kind of product, but want a slightly different take, like people who don't want to look like everybody else. So that's why we picked this category. Um, I think it did better than we expected for the first uh, generation and subsequently. Were you surprised by the demand? Because I wasn't, but were we you? we actually added more um, to the production than we originally anticipated. So a little bit, um, and luckily that helped us kind of cement ourselves and gain trust with suppliers to, who kind of previously were like, "Hey, why are you making earbuds? Like, there's so many earbuds out there. Why, why would this work? We've seen countless of cases that didn't work. So after kind of proving ourselves with the ear one." Um, a lot of other suppliers were open to working with us, and I think investors were also a lot more comfortable uh, betting on this team. Sure. Uh, and your favorite Ear 2 feature? Uh, for me, it's probably the dual connection. So, you know, when you're listening to music on your computer and a phone call comes in, it just switches. Yeah, uh, quite it's very handy, isn't it, when you're multitasking? And... Um, I think it's great for people who use a 
combination of Android and Apple products. I use a MacBook computer, but an Android phone, and switches quite seamlessly. I think if you're a pure Apple ecosystem user, maybe the AirPods work better in that regard. Not sure, but I think if you're not Apple everything, this is probably a really good solution. Sure. So following on from that, nothing motto or ethos, I'm paraphrasing here, um, try and make tech as seamless as possible, mm -hmm. you know, breaking down that boundary between people and, and mm -hmm. technology. Um, do you feel you've achieved that so far with the products you've made? And with your future products, uh -huh. how are you planning to, you know, make that mm -hmm. more so? And, and, and how is it going to be different from other tech brands that are, yeah. um, you know, creating products? I think that's like a really long-term thing. Mm -hmm. It's like the vision. We've been reflecting on this um, statement, like remove barriers between people and technology. Um, in hindsight, maybe it's too abstract. Maybe it will take too long to get there. And it's not that easy to fully understand. Mm. So we actually simplified it. So for now, it became, um, we changed it to make tech fun again. I think that's a message that, that's a lot easier for consumers, for our team members, everybody to galvanize behind. Sure. But, you know, ultimately, even the name, nothing, right? Like technology should be everywhere around us, mm -hmm. but we should, it shouldn't be in the way. Mm. Um, so in the, in the short term, in the midterm, you know, we're going to be focused on making products that are very easy to use. And they, they connect seamlessly with each other. So, for instance, the Ear 2 connects to the Phone 1 really well. There's, like, additional controls you can um, tap into from the quick settings, etc. I think long-term, um, I'm not going to talk about the long, long-term, but... Come on, tell us. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're taking steps, but I think over time, the products need to evolve. The ecosystem needs to evolve for that vision to fully come to life. Yeah. I think Make Tech Fun Again is a great kind of interim that we can uh, rally behind. Um, you know, the tech industry, it's kind of boring. It was really interesting, especially when I was younger. I used to stay up to watch. Do you feel it's plateaued then, do you think, in terms of a lot of the... I think in a lot of ways, right? So Because it got so good so quickly, it's, it's hard to constantly evolve, I suppose. So I think you can um, split apart the... And your time is up. <laughs> we put on airplane mode. Who will call this number? Is it public? Yeah, it's on Google uh, Maps. Oh, wow. That's cool. There you go. Um, Take a peek there from the store. We can look at it in two ways, hardware and software. Um, hardware has plateaued, right? So every year we see a slightly better camera, slightly better something. Maybe the bezels become a little bit smaller. Maybe the screen refresh rate becomes a little bit faster. Not a ton of innovation there. And also yeah. a lot of that is um, supply chain driven. So suppliers, not even the, 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 the brands themselves, but their suppliers like Qualcomm and whatnot have new technologies that you can just implement. On the software side, I think the major innovation was App Store, um, and that was 2008. Yeah. Before the App Store, when you bought a new phone, you had a certain number of features, but after the App Store, you could just, you could just download whatever you want, right? So if you had an infinite amount of features, you just download it. I think what happened after the App Store was basically that a lot of these app companies became really big and they need to optimize for the amount of time spent inside of the apps. So the more time you spend in these apps, the more they can charge advertisers for advertisements. And I think that's like a really um, uh, great relationship with the platform companies like uh, Apple with the App Store. So Apple also makes more money when the app developers make money. So I think we became very, very business minded as an industry. How can we maximize our profits on the apps and the app store versus how can we really push the boundary in terms of mobile OS and what it can bring to people. So I would say, yeah, last five to eight years, it's been kind of boring. Um, you know, a lot of us who work here at Nothing have contributed to making the industry boring. So we thought, you know, what if we had a fresh take when we didn't have all the constraints um, that the bigger companies have, mm. maybe we could eventually push the innovation forward in our category. Cool. Good stuff. It's good to hear. A um, couple of fun ones now. Mm -hmm. um, if you weren't the Nothing CEO right now, where would you be and what would you be doing? Uh, it's very. I never thought about this in this context because it must be hard because this is my entire identity in my life. life. Yeah. Uh, what did like when you were growing up? Did you did you always want to be in tech or did you want to possibly? No, it always changed. I went from um, wanting to be a kung fu master. Okay. To a policeman and um, before founding that thing one of my other ideas was to start a mezcal brand so a type of uh, alcohol 
um, if I wasn't doing this now, maybe I would uh, open a restaurant or something. Okay. I would st still want to create something that other people can enjoy. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. Um, and the final question is kind of like a, it's like a quick fire trio of questions. Um, what's your current daily device, if what, you're allowed to say? What do you think? I, I, well, I, I'm guessing it's a nothing phone, but... but it is it, a certain a unreleased... Certain, a certain unreleased nothing phone, phone yeah. Is it good? It's, it's very good, yeah. Okay, good. Um, and if you, you know, if nothing didn't exist, uh -huh. what phone would you be using right now, do you think? Uh, probably iPhone. Okay. I mean, it's become the default choice for like a lot of people, most people. If you just want a phone that really works well and you don't want to worry too much about anything and whenever it breaks, just buy a new one, just iPhone is the go-to choice. It's kind of like when we were growing up, the PCs used to be like a standard choice. Yep. And if you were creative, if you, you were cool and yeah, fun and you yeah, got an yeah. Apple product. Yeah. But now I think Apple has become like the standard choice. Okay, fair enough. Um, and the final one was what is, I'm, I'm sure you're not allowed, to, I, I was going to ask you what apps are on your phone, on mm -hmm. your homepage. I'm guessing because it's uh, an unreleased phone, you can't show us. Mm -hmm. um, but what are the apps that you use most frequently, uh, say out of you know your top five apps that you mm. use most, do you think? Unfortunately, it's probably social media apps. But now I put them all in, in, into a folder and it's, it's not really on the home screen anymore. Okay. Um, Is that one way of reducing screen time and things like that? Yeah, we actually have a new feature that helps us uh, make the social apps potentially less visible. Okay. Uh, so I'm using that. Um, I think it's like a addiction almost, like smoking cigarettes. Like just get addicted to that kick, yep. micro kick you get from, from scrolling. Yep. I think apart from that, it's all the messaging apps to keep in touch with everybody. Yeah, good stuff. Well, it's been a pleasure. Thanks so much for sitting down with me today. Thank you for having me. Um, Carl Pay, I mean, I don't need to, you know, you know who he is. Um, yeah, I can't wait for, for the next products to come. And, uh, and yeah, lovely to meet you. Great to meet you. Thank you. So remember, my review of the Nothing Phone 2 will be coming on launch July the 11th. Subscribe for that. And also get your questions in the comment section below, things you want to know so that I can try and address as many of those as I can in that video. Follow me on my other social medias, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok for short form content on nothing products and tech in general. My name is Adam. You've been the best as always. I love you. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.